Right girls, I said I'd um, make a quick video here on a an exam question. It's from 2006, it's the higher level paper and it's question 11 where there are three parts and you do two. Uh, just to give you a bit of um, you know, information on this for the 2021 paper, it's still gonna be three parts due to. Uh, part C here each year up to now was the um, it was the option, and um, I suppose there was industrial chemistry and environmental chemistry in the options, but this year they've got rid of the option, so it's it's not on the course, it's not going to be examined, so um, we're still going to have three parts to question 11, and you still are going to do two parts of the three, but it just means that you've extra choice in question 11. And you don't have to do all this extra material on environmental or um, industrial chemistry, which is handy. So um, we're just going to look at part B here, which is a half question on chemical, chemical equilibrium. You see the first part is state le Chatelier's principle for seven marks. So that's just the case of um, stating the definition, the Chatelier's principle, along the lines of that when... A stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the uh, position of equilibrium readjusts to relieve the stress. So that's um, words to those effect re with regard to Le Chatelier's principle there for seven marks. Um, then the next part of the question looks at this, and this was in the PowerPoint that we were looking at earlier. Um, so we've got this cobalt complex cobalt with six waters added which is um pink and chloride ions and then you're getting this cobalt chloride which is blue and then you get water so the following e equilibrium is set up in solution by dissolving cobalt two chloride crystals in water to form the pink species cobalt six waters and then adding concentrated hydrochloric acid until the solution becomes blue so you you make this complex ion um, which is pink then you add the hydrochloric acid and then it, it moves over to being blue uh, and you get some water as well when the solution becomes blue has uh, when the solution becomes blue has reaction ceased explain looks like there's a little bit of a an error in that question but um, has the reaction ceased well I suppose what you know about equilibrium at this stage is that, you know, you can see here that there is a forwards and backwards arrow showing that it's a reversible reaction. So the forwards reaction is constantly going, the backwards reaction is constantly going. So the reaction hasn't ceased. It's just reached the state of equilibrium. So for six marks, no, it hasn't ceased. Why? Because the equilibrium is ongoing. It's constant dynamic state. Um, for part two, the forwards reaction is endothermic and then state the and explain the color change observed on cooling the reaction mixture. So endothermic. What endothermic means is that it takes in heat. I've just written out the um, equation here so I can write on it. Um, so the forwards reaction is, is endothermic. Now, most of the reactions that we come across are actually exothermic, which means that they give out heat. Um, and you would have come across endothermic and exothermic reactions in the fuels chapter, chapter 21. And you might be familiar with this, delta H being negative, whatever, uh, or delta H being positive. When you have delta H equals negative, it means that it's giving out heat. It means that it's endothermic. So that's the case for this forwards reaction. It gives out heat. So, um, if if this gives out heat, then, or sorry, if this it means that it gives it takes in heat. So, if this is taking in heat, what I like to do is I like to write heat there as a reactant. So this is an endothermic reaction going forwards. So our delta H is actually positive in this case. We don't even need to get into that, but I'm just making a link back to something that you've done before. It takes in the heat. So the heat here is like a reactant. 
and the opposite to endothermic is exothermic so exothermic means that it gives out heat the reverse reaction would be exothermic so heat is a i suppose it's a product of the, re the backwards reaction um we've already answered part one we're looking at part two the forwards reaction is endothermic state and explain the color change observed on cooling the reaction mixture now if you heat up this reaction it will move away from the stress that you've applied to it heat is one of the products here on the left so if you put in heat it's going to move away and it's going to go blue so if you take away heat it's going to move backwards and it's going to go pink so the answer there for part two is that it's going to be pink and why it's because of the stress that you've applied to it it, you have tried to cool it down, which is take away heat, so it's going to produce more heat to get the equilibrium going again. In part two then, or in part three, other than heating, mention one way of reversing the change caused by cooling the reaction mixture. So, um, we know that it goes, it goes pink if you cool it down, and part three asks us to try and reverse that so make it go forwards again so make it go blue again um now you could heat it up as i said you could heat it up because heat here will make it move away but it did say other than heating um in my first way of um you know there's a couple of different ways of doing this but probably the easiest thing that you could do is that you could introduce more of the chloride ions so if you introduce some of the chloride ions add chloride ions and how do we get the chloride ions in the first place from concentrated hydrochloric acid and that will move the equilibrium over here to the right and it'll turn blue again so that's probably the most straightforward way that you could reverse the change that you made in part two to make it go pink and make it go blue again by pushing the equilibrium towards the forwards reaction.